Hello my friends and welcome to another Tuesday of tutorial. I am Leonardo Perez Nieto and because I have gotten so many requests about it, I'll do a basic video on shading. I'll begin sketching a solid figure and I'll do a very basic shading. A series of parallel lines called hatching. This is very natural and fast. I'll do the same on the other sides, but pressing less. If I want it darker, I can go over it again or do a cross hatching. And the projected shadow or cast shadow would be something like this, if the light came from the upper left. And I can do what is called an accent, that's where the figure touches something else. Ok, I'll sketch another figure for another example. For a more realistic shading, I do a series of circles or ovals or twiddly things covering the plane. I repeat the same thing over here, but pressing less. I may use a brush to smudge the graphite. And then with a needed razor, I can pull the dark spots to make it look more uniform. Of course you can use different types of shading in the same drawing. When shading, sometimes it's good to follow the shape of the object. Let's do an example with a sphere. It could be shaded with circular lines to show the form. I will make it a cast shadow so that it doesn't look like it is up in the air. In the drawing I made when I did the tutorial on hands, you can see how I follow the shapes. But let's look at a much better example. This is from the great Raphael, and you can see how he followed the shapes when doing the shading, to the detail. This is by Rembrandt. He not only followed the shape on the face, but also on the hat. This technique is not only for drawings. Let's look at a Rembrandt's painting now. I am not sure if you are able to see this in the video, but he did the brush strokes following the shape of the head, the shape of the cheek, of the nose, etc. I am not saying that you have to draw or paint like this, but it is a technique worth knowing to give emphasis to the volume. There is another aspect worth knowing when shading curves. And as you know, I love drawing and shading beautiful curves. <laughs> no, seriously. First I draw a line that divides the areas of light from the shadow. And I tone the dark area. With a light tone, I lose the edge because I don't want it to look like there is a corner or something. But here is the point that is not as intuitive, and that is that the darkest area is just by the light. It is called a core shadow, while the shadow that is further away gets a little bit of a reflected light and therefore is not as dark. I was referring, of course, to the shadows on the sphere. The cast shadow, generally speaking, is the darkest of all. I'll smudge a little. If I wish, with the eraser, I can pull this darker spot. 
The reason the coarse shadow happens is this. The beams of light come straight and let's say they come from this side. All this area will be in the light. Here is a curve and the beams of light don't curve as fast. Actually they don't curve at all, but they illuminate the small particles in the atmosphere and they reflect the light to other particles and give the illusion as if the light curved. But doesn't curve as fast, so this area is the darkest. And this other area, as gets some reflected light, is not as dark. Now, in regards to where the cast shadow falls, that depends where the light is coming from. Let's follow the direction of the line and see that this corner goes here and this one here, and so the shadow will be something like that. But if the light came from the flat side instead of the corner, then it would be different. Let's say that the light came in this direction, then the shadow will be something of this sort, something like that. To resolve any questions on this, I recommend to look at an actual object and its shadow. Okay, I have received many questions asking how do I shade? And the answer is, it depends totally on what I am shading. For example, I could use little dots, dots and dots. This is not fast, but gives a special effect. It is nice when drawing a concrete or rock ball. But if I were to draw something made out of wool or something like this, I would probably use scribbles. While for drawing a bright metal, like the chromed rim cover of a car, I would shade it totally smooth and with a high contrast of tone. I will make a horizon line, very dark. The reflection of the street and the reflection of the sky. And to shade something totally different, like the feathers of an owl, I'll sketch it with short and soft lines to try to give that texture. It came out very bad, but that's okay. Now, realize that the brightest you want something to look, the darkest you need to draw. For example, this poor star is not shining, and you cannot go lighter because she's as light as the paper. So go darker all around it. The darker you go, the brighter it will become. I'll smudge with the brush and then pull the light again with the eraser. Very well, now she's bright and shiny. There are tools that help us shading, such as a brush, a stump, etc. Of course, what they do is that they smudge the graphite or the charcoal. I explain and demonstrate this a little bit more in my tutorial about materials. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it to watch that one and the one on the line, which are the basics. I'll give the links at the end of this video when the credits come out. Very well. If it was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. You know where to follow me and where the links are. And I'll see you on Tuesday.